Hey there, fellas. So what's the plan for today? Well, it's the usual... experiments. Anyway, we got a ton of people requesting we try... putting together a car with a steam engine. We've decided to go ahead and try making a motor which runs on compressed air. We'll be taking this here simple four-stroke internal combustion engine and turning it into something capable of running on compressed air. Our intention is to make it so that the car moves in the process. All right, let's make ourselves a pneumatic engine. Steam engine conversion part one. Startup on compressed air. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, fellas, so we figured out a temporary solution for the air intake system on this motor. We're going to try ramming it in there through the intake manifold. To do that, we fabricated this here plate, which will be replacing the carburetor. We'll weld on a bung and screw in a fitting for quickly attaching and disconnecting the air hose. It's all trial and error from there. And if things work out, we will start setting everything up. Now it's all a matter of welding this on, installing the plate. After that, we remove the valve cover. It's going to be a nightmare from there. We're going to have to retune the intake and exhaust timing and... Uh, then again, I'll explain it once we get there. Okay, so we've installed the metal plate. We're looking good. Now we can force some air straight into the intake manifold. But here's the problem. This doesn't involve anything particularly difficult, but I suggest we do a quick recap on how an engine works. Okay, figure one. What are we looking at here? That there's the intake stroke. That's when the intake valve is open and the air-fuel mixture goes into the combustion chamber thanks to the vacuum created by the piston while it's on its way down. So that's the first stroke. Moving along. So after that void is filled with the right amount of air and fuel, the intake valve closes and we move to the compression stroke. That's when all of that air mixed with fuel in the combustion chamber is getting squeezed. Okay, stroke number three. That's when the mixture is ignited. When combustion occurs. Basically, an explosion happens inside the cylinder and shoves the piston downwards. The valves are obviously shut at this stage. As for stroke number four, that would be... After the mixture is burned up and the piston makes its way down, it then comes up and expels the exhaust gases. So all of this is pretty much common knowledge. In our case, the intake and compression strokes can take a walk. We don't care about those. What we need is the remaining two. Since we are making a motor running on compressed air, we need the air to enter the cylinder under high pressure and push the piston down. After that, with a bit of help from the flywheel and every other component, the other cylinders, when it starts to come back up, we will need the air to exit the cylinder. Okay. I say we remove the camshaft. We figure out how it works. The timing. The general layout. We need to take a close look at the cam. Right, so first we figure out the camshaft, so now I guess we get to... We'll be cutting and welding, using an angle grinder, the usual stuff. We'll make it work. Here's what we're looking at, fellas. We've removed the camshaft. We've marked the intake and exhaust sides. Anyway, so here's the lobe, which opens the valve. In order to make it open twice as frequently, what do we do? You guessed it. We need to extend it on the other side. I guess we have our work cut out for us. We should end up with a, with a pretty curious looking camshaft.
Okay, so now we're looking at a bunch of additional lobes on this here camshaft. Curious to see how this is going to work. I'm guessing it should work okay. We've offset everything by exactly 90 degrees. Meanwhile, the cylinders will be working away simultaneously. The pistons do reciprocate two at a time. I say we throw in this cam. Shoot some air in there. We'll use the starter motor to give it a boost if we have to. It should be able to at least sustain its rotation. Here's where we're at, fellas. We're hooking it all up. So far, so good. Okay, let it rip. We've removed one of the spark plugs. Let's make it spin. See that? It's trying hard to push through. Hold up, dude. A bit more. Right, now we've got plenty of air blowing out. Let me just plug it. It almost fired up. I can try, of course, but there's a ton of pressure. Keep going. Right, hopefully now it works. Apparently there's not enough air going in. Curious to find out how much we're lacking. When does the compressor flip on? Like at about 6 bar? Okay, it switches on once it gets to 6 and shuts off at 9.5. I'd say we've got plenty of pressure to play with. It should be enough to rotate the crankshaft. Right, we need to find out how much force is exerted on the piston and how much pressure we're pumping into the cylinder. To do that, we'll take this here compression tester. Let's see what's up. Wait up. Maybe we just rotate it for starters and see what's up. Okay, let's do that. Nothing's happening. Show me something. What was that? Something weird just happened. It's reading zero. Right, looks like we've... made a slight miscalculation. Why is it that he flipped it on and it started moving? I'd also like to know why it started to rotate after you opened the tap. It's the motor that's getting the blow. Thus, we don't swing that way. Let's open the tap. I've got an idea. What if we spin it the other way? The other way, you say? Flip it on. Uh -huh. We do have pressure, don't we? Despite your doubts. But in some other cylinder, not this one. There you go. You know what I think? It hit me pretty hard. Well, yeah, that was pretty obvious. I think we might not have enough. Maybe the flywheel is too light. I don't think so. We were using the starter motor, and it still wouldn't spin on its own. Given the hose we're using, which is 8 mil tops, it's not going to build pressure at the rate we need. I actually agree. We've got two cylinders working at once. Two cylinders worth of volume, plus the intake manifold. You know what? I think we're onto something. Without a doubt in my mind. Check out what we've cooked up here, fellas. We're using an intake tube which is significantly thicker than the one we had before. It has a diameter of 32 mil. That should give us the effect we're looking for. So this canister... I'd say it's got about 80 liters worth of volume. Give or take. We're using a ball valve. Let's try this out. All right, let her rip. Oh, wow, yeah! 
give it some more. That was pretty hilarious. It actually worked. And we're out of air. Didn't last long, though. Let's try full blast from the get-go. Are you sure about this? Yeah, go for it. Oh, man. What sort of engine speed was that? Not too much, I'd say. Oh, come on, dude. Two grand, are you kidding? I'd say no more than one and a half for sure, or even one thousand. Does the tack work? No. You ready? Yep. As soon as my arm goes down, we set off. Gotcha. Why didn't it move? Well, we did travel some distance. Sure. Looks like we got somewhere after all. Right, fellas, here's the thing. The engine did start rotating while being fed compressed air. And that's a great thing. I can't say we even did anything spectacular here. We didn't pull that much stuff apart. Didn't do a lot of cutting or what have you. The interesting part is the valve timing. Agreed. All we needed to do was duplicate the lobe profile. And it all worked out. Indeed, it worked pretty well. The cylinders do work in pairs. As in two pistons move at a time in the same direction. We've got two strokes, intake and exhaust, and that's it. You've got two cylinders open, with the other two forcing the air out of those. The engine rotates, and the car even sets off. We're looking at a 107% success rate here. It spins up, and that's very nice to know. I'd say this is a good place to end the video. Next episode, we're making a nice little steam generator. You guys write some comments, we'll go ahead and read them, watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later. You ready? <laughs> what was that? Try it without the starter motor. <laughs>